What's up everyone, this is Dr. Antonio Webb here. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon. In this video today, we're gonna to be talking about the folded man, his condition, his surgeries that he had, and my thoughts as a spine surgeon. All right, so here we go. This is a pretty serious and pretty complex spinal problem that he has. And he's been bent over this way for the last 28 years, which is uh, it's pretty incredible. We really don't see something like this here in the US. This is usually seen in third world countries or really uh, poor and developing countries. So ankylosing spondylitis, what is it? Well, this is a condition that I have seen lots of uh, times uh, throughout my training. I actually have a really good friend who has the condition himself. Ankylosing means to uh, fuse or two parts, such in this case, uh, their bones are connected, they're fused together. And spondylitis means there's inflammation of the joints. So this condition is a inflammatory arthritis that causes your joints to become fused together. It affects your spine, it affects your eyes, it affects your heart, your kidneys. It affects many parts of the uh, body. In this gentleman's case, it has affected multiple parts of his spine, from his cervical spine, which is the top portion of his spine, thoracic, lumbar spine, and even his pelvis. You can tell that because the way he is bent over, and I'm sure it's affected his hips as well. So it's an inflammatory condition that causes the bones, specifically in the spine, to fuse. We also call it bamboo spine. When this happens, the bones become very brittle and they can break really easily. So it's counterintuitive that you have this fused area of the bone that is very brittle, but that's exactly what happens in this condition. This part that he's uh, bending over right here, this is actually called kyphosis. So he has a scoliosis and a kyphosis. Kyphosis just means bent over. Uh, this is a, a pretty complex condition. You can see that his knees are also bent. He has flexion contractures, just means that um, all of his tissues and, and ligaments are really contracted down. And that's why he's bending his knees and he can't stand up straight. It's a horrible way to eat there. This is a CAT scan that they're getting, specifically a 3D view of the CAT scan. In this particular scan, we can actually move the body part or the image around um, in 360 degrees. And for this type of condition, this is a really essential part of the surgical planning if he were to undergo a operation so that we can plan where the screws will go if, if any type of osteotomies or breaking the bone is needed, uh, this CAT scan is really important. Uh, So he has a number of different connections, uh, his chin to his chest. This is usually what happens when the uh, part of the cervical spine starts to tip over into some kyphosis and it causes the patient the inability to extend their neck because of that flex position. He also has uh, his face to his thigh. This is just the result of the kyphosis of his uh, thoracic spine as well as lumbar spine being in so much uh, kyphosis and, and, and essentially just bend of, of his uh, spine. The 
This doctor here is most likely a spine surgeon, either neurosurgery or orthopedic spine surgeon. And he's explaining that this is a uh, pretty high risk surgery. If you can imagine, the spinal cord is just draped over his bones. It's not used to being in this position like this. And when you try to extend him or straighten him up so that he can uh, stand up straight, the spinal cord sometimes can be put on stretch and it can lose blood supply, which means there can be an infarct or some death of the uh, certain areas of the spinal cord. When this happens, a patient be can become paralyzed. This is a very high uh, risk surgery that uh, can have a lot of other complications as well. It's a good analogy to, to scale in Mount Everest. This is another CT scan. Uh, it's not a 3D, it's just a regular CT scan. And this is pretty common that uh, surgeons take a lot of time to plan for surgeries, especially like this, where this gentleman has been like this way for 28 years. You need a multidisciplinary uh, approach to this. You need to talk to the anesthesiologist, to the ICU doctors, you need the pulmonologist involved because this condition is affecting his heart, his lungs, um, every part of his body essentially. So uh, you, you need a team approach to this and this is for these more complex cases, this is exactly what happens. This little plastic thing here that he's blowing on is called an incentive spirometer. This is what we usually give to patients after surgery and they inhale into this device to open up their lungs. Especially after surgery when patients don't take deep breaths, they're, they're not up and moving like someone who didn't have surgery. They can tend to develop what's called atelectasis and this is basically when the lungs are starting to collapse or they don't open up fully. Well, this little machine here actually forces you to open up your lungs so you can exchange um, the respiratory gases, so you can keep those lungs inflated. And just by looking at this, I can tell that his lung or pulmonary reserve is essentially his lung status is pretty poor because he cannot hold these balls up to the top of this little device for a lung. So normally, someone should be able to inhale on this incentive spirometer and hold those balls up. The dark blue one, the light blue one, and the white one, and hold those balls up to the top. That means they can and then exhale. So his pulmonary reserve and his pulmonary function is pretty, um, is pretty limited, and that is a really cause for concern, especially undergoing a big operation that he needs. It's important to have those conversations with patients and tell them that, hey, this is a pretty complex issue. You may die from this or you may become paralyzed. I can't make any guarantees. Um, you know, these are conversations that we have with patients about their conditions. So operation one is called a femoral osteotomy. An osteotomy is essentially when we surgically break a bone. Uh, I know that sounds kind of weird, but in surgery, when, when, when we need to realign a bone or to get a bone in a better position, especially in, the, in spine surgery, when the, the spine is kind of tipped forward or is tipped in a abnormal position or a patient has scoliosis in their spine or curvature, sometimes we break the bone on purpose and we put it in a better position. So th essentially that's what an osteotomy is. And he's gonna have one in his femur or the thigh bone just to give more space. And also because he's been in this flex position for so long, we need to break it and get it into a better position. As you can imagine, you need a really experienced anesthesiologist. His, his chin is on his chest, his face is on his thigh. So trying to intubate someone, which means putting a endotracheal tube within their throat so they can breathe uh, during surgery is pretty challenging. And she's actually using a special machine to uh, do that so she can see where that tube is going.
And everyone's pretty excited that they got the tube in. And that's a that's a hard intubation. As you can see, there are lots of different doctors, healthcare workers that are in the operating room during a surgery. This is a uh, multi-person type procedure where you need lots of different people um, and their expertise. So operation number two, cervical osteotomy. So he has flexion or kyphosis of his neck, also of his uh, th thoracolumbar spine. So we need to break his neck and then usually this involves, uh, there's several different types of osteotomies. We usually do it at C7 or T1. They're most likely doing a, it's called a pedicle subtraction osteotomy, which is a really complex and really high risk type procedure where you're breaking the spine and then you have to reverse their kyphosis or extend their neck to get it in a better position. The spinal cord is right there. You have lots of other very important structures that if you extend his spine, you could paralyze him or you could stretch that spinal cord and he won't be able to move his arms or his legs. In surgery, we use what's called neural monitoring. This is a individual who is trained in reading their neurological or picking up neurological changes throughout surgery. And this person is continuously monitoring the patient's spinal cord and the nerves in surgery. And if there is something that is uh, going on with the spine or the spinal cord that is not getting enough blood flow or there's a major change, the neuromonitoring technician will let us know as surgeons. And as surgeons, we have to figure out what we did to make that change and how can we reverse that neurological change. Sounds about right. Six hours to uh, perform his surgery. And as you can see here, he has a metal object around his head. This is a halo arthrosis. This is a, uh, something that we put patients in after really complex surgeries, or if we want to maintain their position of their head after surgery, or if we feel like there was not good fixation in their cervical spine. We will put patients in this arthrosis here, and he will most likely stay in this for some time possibly until his next operation, but sometimes even weeks after surgery. The little contraption that they have here, they're hooking it up most likely to weights. They're most likely just doing this for traction so he doesn't fall back forward. Uh, they, didn't, they need to fix the rest of his uh, spine, his lumbar spine, most likely an osteotomy also, so that they can realign him to make sure that he can uh, stand up properly. These operations, posterior cervical operations, can bleed a lot. Uh, the the uh, back portion of the neck is a very vascular area, and you, you can run into a lot of problems with bleeding, and that's why he was uh, pretty uh, surprised and also happy that uh, he didn't have much bleeding. That's awesome though that he's actually already sitting up and uh, moving his toes. That's, one, that's the first thing that I notice, especially as a spine surgeon, that he's moving his toes, which is really good. Because when patients wake up from surgery after a spine operation, we try to make sure that they can move their feet, move their legs, because we were working so close to the spinal cord. So operation number three is lumbar osteotomy. This is essentially when we're breaking bones in the lumbar spine. So if there's a lot of kyphosis or if there is abnormal curvature in the spine, well, we need to break that bone to realign it. And in his lumbar spine, this can be very risky as well. So a lot of people in that operating room. You can see the amount of kyphosis, like how bent over he is. And what will happen after they do their osteotomy, they were probably, they're going to flatten the bed so that his back can be more, more flat and less kyphotic.
So the person under the bed is actually trying to flatten the bed out because they most likely loosened um, his fused areas of the bone. They also say he had severe osteoporosis. When we're putting screws and hardware in the spine, sometimes that bone is not very good bone. And when the patient has osteoporosis, the screw purchase that we get, or we're putting that screw in the bone, that, that screw may be able to pull out, and that's bad. We don't want that. We prefer to treat patients before surgery for the osteoporosis with medications or try to optimize their bone health so that when we put this hardware, screws and rods, in the spine, it doesn't pull out the moment that they stand up or they move around, especially when you're doing osteotomies. You need that good purchase of that, of that screw to the bone. He's squirting a little saline within the wound to keep all the soft tissues kind of moist. You don't want him to uh, get an infection. You don't want the soft tissues to dry out. And as you can see, he's laying uh, more flat now, which is really good. So as expected, this is a pretty complex operation. He did get a fever postoperatively. There are a number of different causes of fevers. For the med students out there, nursing students, uh, PA students, this is a good mnemonic that you can use when a patient has a fever postoperatively. The five W's. The fever can be caused by wind, water, the wound, wonder drugs, or walking. So a patient can have a fever from medications that he's on, from his surgical site, from a DVT, which means walking, from a UTI, which the water part, or from his lungs. He can have atelectasis or he can have a PE. So you have to figure out what's causing that fever and the five W's can um, help you make your differential diagnosis. As you can imagine, been in that flex position for so many years, uh, his lung volume, uh, his, his ability to recover from a big operation is, uh, is going to be a challenge. He's still in the traction here. And then operation number four, replacing his hip joints. Ankylosing spondylitis affects your joints, especially your hip joints. And when this happens, your hips become fused or they tend to go into an abnormal position. Well, in this gentleman's uh, case, his hip joints are probably really arthritic. They're fused together, so he needs an operation to replace uh, his hip joints. This is pretty common in the patients who have ankylosing spondylitis. <laughs> Lots of operations. Wow, he, he's definitely been through a lot over the last week or so.
You can see he's pretty weak and pretty frail. He's not used to being up and walking. Anytime that we don't walk or if we're sitting for too long or if we're in a bed for too long, our body and our muscles, they atrophy. And some people say use it or lose it, which means if you're not constantly applying pressure to the to the muscles, to the joints, to the bones, uh, they will atrophy and shrink. So he has a pretty significant uh, rehab process in the next few months, even years. So this, this is gonna be a really long kind of uh, rehab process for him. So this is a really interesting case of the folded man. Uh, this is a pretty severe and pretty complex spinal issue, spinal condition that um, I have not seen something this severe here in the US. If you go overseas to other countries, you may see things like this from ankylosing spondylitis or from tuberculosis or certain other conditions. But um, here in the US, less likely to see something this severe. They did a really good job. Hopefully long term, um, you know, he doesn't have any more complications. Hopefully all his screws and rods all stay in place and um, that he makes a, a full recovery from this. But these are my thoughts as a spine surgeon on the Folded Man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any other reactions or movies or TV shows that you would like me to react on as a spine surgeon, put it in the comments below. But thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.